In this first video of our Tyrannus radio series, we're going to do one of the very basic things that you should do when you first get your radio, and that's install and update the firmware so that you're using the very latest and greatest technology. Now this is my Tyrannus Plus. This was provided by one of my subscribers. I'm not going to mention him by name, but I will say a very big thank you again to him for sending this to me. This is very generous. It now means that we can actually go through and set up things with the Tyrannus and some of the models that we've used before, and also play with things like telemetry, RSSI, battery voltage monitoring and setups. But this video, as we've said, we're going to talk about firmwares. Now, it took me probably about half an hour to figure this out and get it working. I'm using a laptop that is very familiar with talking to all different kinds of remote control technology, uh, APMs, multi wees FTDI adapters, all kinds of things, and I still had to install some extra pieces on it to make it work. There are two really great websites that we're going to talk about. The first one is the Open TX University. I'll put the links in the description below the video. Uh, loads of great information in here. You could spend hours reading through all this. Don't be put off by the fact it's called a university. It's very accessible. I think that was done as a joke thing originally. It's just a great repository of information. The second place that we need to have a look at is this one here, opentx.org. And we're looking here at the downloads.html. Again, I'll put a link in the description so you can go straight here. This is where we're going to get the software we're going to use to upgrade our Tyrannus radio. So if you scroll down in the downloads area, you'll find the first bit we need, which is under OpenTX Companion Downloads. That's the Windows graphical user interface that we're going to use to flash the firmware and configure and play with the radio. Latest version as I'm recording this is 2.0.17. So I would click on that and then save it to your computer. That's what I've done. If you go right the way to the bottom, there's the other piece of software that you want, which is in the other download section, is actually called the Zadig 2.10 driver installer for Tyrannus flashing. This was the bit that I initially missed out and was causing me all the headaches. So you're going to need to download both of those. I think the OpenTX version is actually available for other platforms like OSX and Linux and other things as well. So it doesn't have to be a Windows driver for that piece. Once you've downloaded both of those, I would then go and install OpenTX, make sure it works. And uh, the interface is quite nice, quite um, simple and uncluttered. And we are almost ready to install the radio. Now the radio where we're flashing firmware has to be turned off. When it's turned on, it'll be turned on so that you can do things like access the memory, the EEPROM, play with things like models. To update firmware, it absolutely has to be turned off. Now the first time you plug the radio into the PC with it turned off, the PC will detect that it's a new device and it will go away and very merrily find the STM32 bootloader. And when it's found that, it will install it and it will all look like it's worked perfectly. In fact, using that STM32 bootloader that's loaded by default by Windows, you can access the EEPROM and the models and other pieces on the radio so it looks and feels like it's all going to work. That is, until you try and flash the firmware. And what happens is you get this error message that says, opening DFU capable USB device cannot open device. If you are seeing this error on your screen, this is probably because you are looking at the radio through the default driver and you're not using the Zadig driver update. So next thing I'd do then is I'd actually go and open the Zadig driver. So here it is on my desktop. I'm going to double click it, install it, and then what I'm going to do is go to the top and get it to list the devices that it can see on my PC. And what I'm looking for is that um, STM32 bootloader that Windows has already configured for me. Once I've found that, then leaving everything else default, I'm going to sell it to update the driver. Now, next bit can take a couple of minutes. 
And the key to this process is patience. Always make sure that the PC has finished the previous step. Because if you're trying to do this before the STM32 driver has been installed by Windows, it won't work. But eventually, it'll come up and say that the driver installation was successful. At which point, we can go straight back into the OpenTX software and we can now have a crack updating the firmware. There's one last thing that we have to do before we have a go at it. If you try and just immediately go and hit the update firmware button and have a go at it, you'll get an error message that looks something like this. New firmware is not compatible with the one currently installed. That's the bit where your heart starts to sink, but that's because what you have to do is you have to go and actually set up your radio inside OpenTX. So you have to open it up, you have to then select the radio model that you have. So I have a Tyrannus Plus, so that's what I'm going to select. Loads of different things in here. I'm not going to click anything. I'm going to leave pretty much everything by default. I have told it that I want to upload my own custom splash screen. Um, my graphics habit, unfortunately, wouldn't let me leave that alone. So I've created one and put it in here ready to install. And at the bottom, last couple of things, I'm going to get it to append the firmware version number so I can keep track of it when I save it to my local hard drive. And I'm also going to get it to flash the firmware. So we're gonna click go. It's going to download the firmware and it's now going to ask us, do we want to update and upload it to the Tyrannus? going to read the existing firmware and here it is it's actually uploading so while this is uploading let's just summarize what we've done so we've downloaded two bits of software the OpenTX companion we've also downloaded the Zadig driver we've installed the OpenTX We've then plugged in the radio, let Windows find the STM32 driver. Then we've used Zadig to update that STM32 driver to the one that we need. Then we've gone back into OpenTX Companion, made sure we have the right radio selected and clicked go. And now it's flashed, updated, and I even have my own splash screen. Hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to get hold of the radio, or if those of you who are struggling give you an idea of what else you can try. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.